How's it going guys? I am back. I'm finally starting to feel better and getting to the point where I can do some work out here on the ranch again. For those of you that don't know, for the last week or so I've been pretty sick and just haven't really felt like doing much. I haven't been able to get any videos up either and really haven't been doing anything out here on the ranch that didn't absolutely have to be done. Uh, things like irrigating, feeding, you know, those kinds of things can't wait. But little nagging jobs like this right here are pretty easy to put off when you're not feeling too well, but it's time to get caught up. That's what we're doing today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. While I was down here this morning sort of assessing the damage from this branch, I just couldn't help but notice the rest of this fence is in such bad shape as well. And I thought that since I was gonna have to fix a board where this limb fell, that I may as well go ahead and buy enough boards to fix all of these and get this fence looking good again. But before we can do anything with the boards, the first thing that I need to do is get this branch all cut up and piled up. And I've got a bunch of little branches and sticks that are just sort of accumulating in the pasture and I think I want to go ahead and try to pile most of that stuff up and see if I can get this burned before the cows get back in here because what will happen if I don't is they'll have this nice brush pile out here and the cows will just have to rub on that they just have to and what ends up happening is they sort of spread it all out and and, it, and it's no longer a pile by the time they're done and I'll have to do this all over again so hopefully I can get this burned within the next week. All right, well, I don't think I got every single stick out here. I mean, I'd be out here forever if I tried to do that. But I've got a pretty good pile here that should make a fire, and this actually looks a lot better than it did before. So now that I got this mess cleaned up, we can move on to the fence. The first thing that I'm gonna have to do is get these old busted boards out of my way. Now, most of them, uh, when branches hit them or whatever caused them to break, they just popped off of the nails. But there is one here that somehow just broke right in the middle. Um, so what I'm going to have to do with that one is, is cut it at the post and then I'll put a new board in between the posts. So it's going to be a little bit more work than it probably should be. But I think if I just take the skill saw and set the blade depth to the same as the board thickness, that I can just cut it right off at the post and throw a new one in. So 
Some of you might be looking at these broken fence boards and noticing how thin and flimsy they are. And it's true, they are. And I just, as I am replacing them and noticing that all the ones that broke are these thin ones, it reminds me of how this fence came to be built this way. I'm not sure how old I was when I built this. I think I was in high school or, yeah, I must have been in high school. Me and my grandpa went to buy the boards and we were looking for two by six by 16s. And wherever we went, they didn't have that size in, you know, just a regular two by six, but they had one by sixes. And we kind of decided since the fence was mostly decorative anyway, that one by sixes would be all right. In hindsight, that wasn't a great decision and we're, I'm kind of paying the price for it now. But the one by six is made up for about half of the boards we put on this fence. And then for whatever reason, now the, my memory is a little fuzzy, but we did put regular two by sixes up on the rest of it. And those seem to be holding up much better. Imagine that. Yeah, I'm looking at this and thinking, man, what was I thinking putting these little one bys on here? But you know, like I said, I was in high school and I'm probably smarter now than I was then. <laughs> putting up boards, well, there's really nothing to it, but when you're doing it by yourself, it can get a little bit tricky. So I thought I'd show you guys uh, the strategy that I have found that makes this two-man job into a one-man job. When we're looking at the board that's already here on the fence, you just take a screw and put it in the post right even with the bottom of that board. So do that on this side. And then do the same thing on that side. Now I'm guessing that you guys can figure out immediately how this is all gonna work, but let me just show you anyway. This one did split on me a little bit uh, right here on this bottom screw. And I probably should be putting pilot holes in these boards to prevent that from happening, but I didn't bring my drill bits over here and I figure once I get a coat of paint on that, it'll fill that crack in. And you know, like I said, these boards, they're not, I mean, the barbed wire is what's holding the cattle in on this fence. These boards are really more just for looks. So I think it's gonna be fine. Had I to do it again, I would probably bring drill bits and do it the right way, but this is going to work. All right, that should pretty well do it here. I've still got a little bit of junk to clean up, branches and boards and stuff, but I'm running out of daylight and I still need to go move cows. So I think that stuff is gonna have to wait for another day. In fact, I was thinking when I start the brush pile up, I'm probably gonna have to babysit it for a little while. So if I have some more stuff to clean up over here, at least it'll give me something to do and I won't just be sitting there twiddling my thumbs. Anyway, now that this is done, uh, let's run down and move those cows. Think, girls, you ready for a new field? I know that some of you guys were asking about the fly treatment that we gave the cows. What was that? Maybe a month ago now. And a lot of people wanted to know how long that was good for. 
And I kind of hate to say it, but roughly a month later, I can see that the flies are really kind of starting to make a comeback. So I don't know if that's sort of an indication that that treatment needs to be done more often, like once a month. I think that probably the flies have gained some resistance to what we're giving them. So next year, I'm gonna have to try something different. Ear tags maybe. Um, I'll have to look into some different options, but the flies definitely aren't as bad as they were, but you can see, well, she actually doesn't have them too bad. But you can see a few of them on her back there. There's a couple, like I was saying before, the flies just like them a lot better. And for whatever reason, they just really, <laughs> really bother those cows. I feel bad for them, but I don't really know what else to do beyond what I'm doing. And as long as we're out here and I just happen to be looking at her, this is the heifer that we doctored that had hoof problems, um, I don't know, a little while back. And you can see as she eats, she's not losing any weight. She looks really healthy and really good um, in that regard, but she does still favor that foot ever so slightly. I think if I didn't already know that she had a problem, it would probably be really difficult to, to see that she does now. So I think she is still getting better, um, but it's just going to take a little bit more time until she's 100%. Everybody's always asking about Hank. They never see him in the background, but hey, here he is. <laughs> Hank doesn't quite have the rotation idea down just yet. And rather than sit out here and wait for him to figure out how to get into the new pasture, I decided to lead him. But I didn't have a lead rope, so... I'm using my belt and fortunately Hank is pretty well behaved and pretty gentle so I can do that. I don't know if you can do that with just any horse but he's a pretty good boy. And last but not least you don't want to forget to turn the hot wire back on. Thanks for hanging out with me today guys and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.